early ideas, how they wanted it to come across. They were like, yeah, we wanted to create a post-apocalyptic zombie game. But we wanted it to be about two people, evacuate like a where? journey of two people. What do you think? Quarantine zone. Fucking. See, some places got a heads up before. Home run, wasn't it, mate? Home run. Most didn't. I'm glad I've uh, been around in the generation uh, to play the it. Of Joel and Tell you journey that. Through this game across America, you find all these different societies. All there ain't many games what you come across you where it's see, just you know. How do they deal with the infected? Without the manifestation of this infection, it just don't go much better than what they did really. Those interesting choices for what they were trying to do, especially at remaster. Incredible. With like graphics update and. How they can probably the make it look exactly how they wanted it, what they really got imagined. With a lot of texture, hold back some of the happens, you know, hardware years of the fall of man, when or no restrictions, care of I should say. Uh, this book called uh, The World Without Us describes in detail how much fighting on a day to day basis we'd have to do to keep nature back. And once you stop doing that, how quickly nature can reclaim that. They talk about New York and how every day they pump water out of the subway system. If that system breaks down within two days, a whole city is flooded. And once water gets introduced, then structures collapse pretty quickly. Trees will sprout, and wind will carry those seeds over, and gutters get clogged, and then when it rains, water fills up, and then pretty soon you have vegetation growing over there, and once you have vegetation, concrete breaks pretty easily for when there's a tree and roots breaking through that. Even some of the stuff we did on Uncharted, you know, exploration of how temples were ruined, what if you took those ideas and put them in Pittsburgh or Boston. And obviously right when that happened, you can imagine that being some of these way, man. terrible to look at. But you think about 20 years later and with rainwater uh, I think there'll be a part three. Um, like little marshes uh, having not played there. part two, this wonderful uh, I don't know how it ends, so really I couldn't answer it, dude. I guess I'll the past find out. Is it coming weeks? Bread, and now they have herds roaming these cities. And that's something that tells you that life goes on. And this world is worth saving. Shh, don't scare it. I won't, I won't. Oh, this is where I got photo mode out. There's something really pretty about nature reclaiming its domain once we are gone. So fucking cool. We have another level of OCD of the logic that goes into some of these environments. Do you uh, follow my Facebook page, uh, Warren? I'm not sure if you did or not. From its base, and that I put the, um, the snow put, I put the picture up there of the rings of leaves um, showing through in the snow. That gives it that extra, you know, believability. This is pitch uh, photo mode. I'm an messing around with when you find the giraffe. Sort of the feel of the environment. Something like this, very brushstrokey, very painterly. You can see not a lot of detail, just energy and and conveying a mood. This is sort of just a conversation starter. And then this would be more um, an actual I'll space to start talking about. Is this too tight of a space right uh, here? Does the player even fit fact. through there? Do we even want to include water? The conversations you start having a little bit later. And then it usually needs several more passes back and forth in order to be tightened up to be the, the experience that you would see in the final product. So, dude, I was actually trying to figure out right here, there should probably be some dead foliage. It might be cool to see some of the dead stuff around the edges of the green or like even spilling out into the street. Maybe what we do is in some of these areas, we use it as like a transition to form from the actual concrete to the side of the building. So like they're almost sitting on top of a bed of dead foliage, like that really rich kind of like orangey brown yeah. color. Sienna or something would be nice. Something real cheddar. -y. That's how you know you're done. The end product often ends up being stronger because that bouncing back off somebody else gives you a result that maybe you wouldn't have even thought of in the first place. Look at the state of this game. Right. Ridiculous. Here's the bridge. That's our way out of here. As far as concept art goes, definitely the ultimate goal is just helping everybody as much as possible. Me and the background artists will work together. I'll often just go to them because they've got like a really, really good like visual imagination. At some point, you came in almost like flat on. So that's kind of good because the bus station is right in your peripheral view and and you're probably going to enter the bus station. You're probably not going to get lost. Yeah. But it doesn't at all utilize this cool architecture here, like the bus station sign. Like that's a really distinctive silhouette and it's a really interesting sort of architectural detail. So we changed the entrance. Look at that. Another city, another abandoned quarantine zone. I think it's a better composition anyway. It's just what you just said there, dude, what I'm doing here. Just the little um, bits 
I think that was little done. bits of attention to detail. But... If you didn't see the wedding bus on it, you might not know it's a bus station. It's Difference like, between yeah, making but something good or something great. Environments is relating back to what you should be feeling in the story or what's happening to these characters. So is that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. But man, can't deny that view. Come on, this way. When we first came up with Ellie and Joel, we had this idea in our heads of who they would be, but we didn't necessarily know... It's a great moustache. ...the voice. It took us a while to find our Joel, but for Ellie, I think Ashley was the second or third candidate to walk in, and right away we knew. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Why are you so scared all of a sudden? Because, because I'm a coward, okay? So just get your shit, and let's get out of here. Damn it. The way she delivered the lines, the way she just embodied that character is like, that's Ellie, there's no question about it. And I saw the character artwork and I related to her a lot. I mean, she's kind of a tomboy and she's kind of tough. Yeah. And, I mean, obviously I'm not 14 and I think that's- Making me want to speed run it. Between the two of us. I've unlocked, I've unlocked- I um, scenes and I was like, I one -shot kills, need to play this part. Um, you want to be my hero? Explosive arrows. a whole bit about saving my life. Find me a stack of Infinite ammo. Right. Where'd you get that? Back at Bill's. I mean, all of this stuff was just lying around. And then once we had her, we said, okay, well, we're going to do another round. And we're going to have Ashley this time in the casting sessions. The chemistry of these two characters was imperative to get right. Troy was a really interesting casting for Joel because when you see Troy, he doesn't look like Joel at all. You know, he's so handsome and he had like, you know, the frosty hair and totally looked like Final Fantasy. And so, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I don't know. He's like this tall, pretty. Um, it didn't seem right. I walked into the room fully aware that I was the youngest person that they were seeing for this role. There was a line that was in the audition side that says that Joel has few moral lines left across. And so that became the anchor point to the character. But then as soon as he spoke and he had the grit in his voice, warm, yet kind of dangerous and his movement is just like you bought into it why are you so scared all of a sudden because i'm a big coward okay now pack up your shit and let's go god damn it i'm not hurting you now what i think i'm gonna end up like your daughter really you are treading on some very thin ice right now it was Ellie and Joel. After he read, it was just like, that was, that was it. Wow. I've done some video games in the past, but to be handed the mantle of a franchise like this was a pretty big honor. Is she alive? She's alive. Great being. David's newest pet. Where? In the town. In the town. You mark it on the map. The same exact spot your buddy points to. <laughs> Neil pulled me aside one day and he said, I have some ideas. And as you're well aware, uh, Neil is a little twisted. No, he no. Up with this character um, and, thinking you know, it. I Uncharted. It. it was Luke, um, Drake. Such a departure from Nathan Drake, in it? Here from Naughty Dog, uh, to say the least. Name's David. This here's my friend James. We're from a larger group women, children. We're all very, very hungry. To be able to put on a voice that, you know, hopefully a lot of people won't know. Fucking hell, does he do voice for him? Because we didn't want to Bad. do Drake. Drake eating people, that's... That's a whole nother game. Yeah. How did you put it? Tiny pieces. Oh my god. See you tomorrow, Ellie. That's There's fucking brilliant. That I can do wouldn't fit the David's artwork and but he showed me the art and I I said maybe it's something like this where everything's you know it's very quiet and just you know he's not really sure and the voice can break a little and he just looked and goes yeah that's it so it, it I, I'd love to tell you we hashed it over and we talked no it was great he's a great voice actor uh, tried something. He said, yeah. Nathan Drake a few weeks back I uh, sent a group of men out nearby town to 
Look for food. Only a few came back. And turns out that the others had been uh, slaughtered by a crazy man. And <laughs> get this, he, he was with a little girl. You see, everything happens for a reason. Clear. Fucking Jesus, she man. Brought humor to it. Just has <laughs> Imagine working on one of these. Timing. The way she reacts to the things around the world with a little bit of sarcasm, that teen kind of like trying to get a rise out of you. Brilliant, isn't it? Now watch your step as you're going out, because it's going to be a little... <laughs> it just brought a certain levity to the story that the story needed. You didn't even realize it needed it until she started doing some of that stuff. Oh. I'm sure your friend will be missing this tonight. Mm -hmm. It's light on the reading, but it's got some interesting photos. Now, now, Ellie, that ain't for kids. Whoa! How how the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Well, Just hold your horses. <laughs> I want to see what all the fuss is about. Oh, why are these all stuck together? Um. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> bye bye, dude. <laughs> Throughout the course of shooting over these past couple of years, Ellie and I have kind of morphed into each other, which I know sounds so cheesy. Neil always asks, he's like, well, what would you do in this situation? I think the most important thing that Ashley brought is a sense of capability to Ellie's character that wasn't there in the beginning. The very first thing we shot involved her being pulled out of a car and attacked, and Joel was supposed to go save her. It was written that Ellie sort of was just kind of watching on the side, just waiting till he was done, and I was a little frustrated, because I was like, well, I, if this were real life, I would do something. We did a couple takes, and at some point she walked up to me and she said, I feel like I'd hit him. So we added in a part, like, you know, right there off the bat, she's not just this damsel in distress. Right there, she wanted to fight back from her very first day of shooting. We didn't have it right initially. She needs to be more capable than initially we thought she would be, and actually that made us go back and rethink combat and rethink a lot of the areas in the game. And now she was going to take a much more active part. <laughs> Anything that requires, you know, a lot of body movement, we do with the actors on the mocap stage. And we try as much as possible to use our actual principal actors, use their body motion as well as their voice. We capture it all at once there on the stage. Having the actors perform as well as being recorded at the same time was imperative to get an accurate performance. Because every time you, you split up the performance in any way, you lose some of that magic where they, they did a gesture or they delivered the line a certain way. And those things have to be in sync or there's just something subconscious that's like off-putting about the performance when you don't do it that way. You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel, but I have lost people too. You have no idea what loss is. Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. It gives you the most Dude, I want to play it again. Realistic performance because you're actually there not just making your own choices but making your own choices based on the other people that are involved in that scene. So you get this truly um, natural approach to things and it shows up. It's like theater in the round. You can do anything from any angle and the smallest, most subtle thing will be able to pick up. There's no place to hide. So you have to be as prepared as possible because you have no idea which moments they're going to use. There are these little improv moments and you know little nuances that you get that probably isn't scripted that just comes out of play. You know while they're performing that that mistake that is just blossomed into a really good idea. Did we improv on The Last of Us? Yes, yes, we did. Doing this was a whole lot like being five playing in the backyard with a stick, you know, and this is my machine gun. Bill. And, you know, and <laughs> is, is my hand grenade. I think he's boy evil great in it. I'm doing the exact same shit that I did 45 years ago. I just get paid for it now. We square. We're square. And get the fuck out of my town. 
I don't do a lot of voiceover work, so for me, it was nice to be able to work off of your other actors. I, I can't imagine it working any other way. I'd never done mocap before. I didn't know what to expect. The suits were crazy. Yeah, the suit gave me wedgies. <laughs> like, deep wedgies that I had to pick out with my middle finger. Too much information. <laughs> Just how damn sexy I look in a motion capture suit. I look like 10 pound of sausage in a five pound casing. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get past the fact that like everybody else and your, you look like Brilliant. Weird clown people with oh, dots dear. and stuff. Once you like give over to that, it really was pretty easy to make it just feel like you're in the moment and in the scene. So everyone that was on this is a slam dunk. This isn't just another gig to them. And that creates a, a really cool energy for people to really start experimenting and playing jazz. Floor is yours.